Thank you, Dan. Welcome, everyone. It is uh, six minutes after the hour of 6 a.m. It's Wednesday, uh, September 18th, 2019, 44 degrees outside. Shane Matalvin, half man, half amazing, is on the line with me from Vancouver, British Columbia. How you doing, man? Oh, my gosh. It's like, what's going on with the world today? <laughs> you think it'd be midweek, Wednesday, Wednesday, you know? Hump day, right? Like yep, hump day. You're, getting, we're, you're getting past it. Now it's all piling on. You yeah. know, you've got. <laughs> well, did you watch those those uh, that housing or I mean that committee meeting yesterday? Then you got Iran, and then yep. you got uh, <laughs> Israel and the election. I mean, that's huge. It's there a big is a day. lot. There's big a, day. We do have a lot to talk about today. That's yeah, for sure. Big day. <laughs> But, uh, hey, before we get to that, we've got to brief you on the weather because, well, weather or not, you need it anyway. Oh, very so, good. Yeah, that was a good one, I thought. That was really, that was really good, yeah. All right, increasing clouds today, uh, high near 72, uh, light winds, uh, so should be pretty, uh, pretty nice. Uh, tonight, though, cloudy uh, during the early evening, then gradual clearing. Have a low around 44, so uh, south winds uh, pretty light. Uh, Thursday, all kinds of things are going to break out. Uh, rain likely, mainly uh, between noon and 3 p.m., then showers likely and possible a thunderstorm later on. Uh, most uh, Mostly sunny through the mid-morning, then becoming cloudy with a high near 64. And uh, calm winds for a change, but uh, precip 60%, and new rainfall could be a tenth to a quarter of an inch, and higher amounts might be possible during thunderstorms. So Thursday is not going to be fun during the day. It's going to rain, thunderstorms, all that stuff, 60% chance of rain. Then Thursday night, uh, rain hangs around, low near around 43. Uh, Evening winds, uh, pretty uh, normal. But uh, chance of precip, 80% Thursday night. Then Friday, rain again, high only 59 on Friday. Um, And the chance of precip is 80%. Friday night, uh, showers likely and possibly a thunderstorm before midnight. Then a chance of rain after midnight, mostly cloudy with a low around 42. Chance of precip on Friday night is 70%. Saturday, a 40% chance of rain, partly sunny, a high only 61. And Saturday night, a chance of rain before midnight, partly cloudy with a low around 41. And then on Sunday, uh, for a change, it's sunny, but a high of only 68. And Sunday night, a chance of rain mainly after midnight, partly cloudy with a low of 44 on Sunday night. So... Rain and rain and more rain, Shane. Uh, today's there you uh, go. Today's our break, and then uh, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> yeah. I, the, excuse, excuse the expression, you fall into fall. Right. Yeah. Uh, our uh, temperatures around the area right now, Livingston's 50 degrees and clear. Manhattan is 42 and partly cloudy. Uh, let's see. Gallon Gateway's 44 and partly cloudy. Ennis, 46. Big Sky is 36. At the airport in Belgrade, it's 40 degrees and partly cloudy. And we are right at 44 degrees here in downtown Bozeman at nine minutes after the hour. So there is your weather for today. That's right, baby. Yeah. Well, on this day in history, guess what happened, Shane? 1759. Who cares? Uh, the French <laughs> surrendered to Quebec. Uh, surrendered Quebec to the British. Uh, why do they still speak French in Quebec if they if they were given to the British in 1759? Well, you know, these were the Quebec. These were the French that you know wanted to definitely get away from the aristocracy in France. But it was amazing because you know. Um, the, the the British locked them the French out in a, in an attempt to grab and and to want all of North America that that was it was, and it was part of the Seven Years War they were fighting in in Europe as well so it was a combination of naval power which the British had and colonial power because the uh, the Brits went out and got the uh, native Indians mm. the Aborigines and and armed them to fight the French. And uh, regrettably, though, after the British took over, they turned on the Indians. So that wasn't a good thing. But yeah, yeah it, you know, it just it just uh, led to the continuous expansion of Great Britain around the world—a small island with a, like a Zippo population. Yeah. 
You know, like they dominated India for a hundred years with twenty thousand men, like crazy. Hmm. Well, well, uh, it's no surprise the French surrendered. Uh, you know, <laughs> but they do. <did. laughs> <laughs> well, they 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 ran they ran out of powder for their wigs. That's oh, that was it. Okay, uh, seventeen ninety three. President George Washington laid the cornerstone of the U.S. Capitol. Well, that's what's so incredible about this whole thing is you look at that incredible building. I've been there several times. It's a remark. I mean, it's the whole thing. September eighteenth, seventeen ninety three. The cornerstone, of course. You know, everybody thinks that he was, you know, involved in one of those, you know, scandalous groups back then. You yeah. Know. Yeah. You know, the, the, like the Knights of Columbus and the Masonic Ritual Group, and but you know, basically, he just started building the the city. That's all that man did. He he was he was big on architecture, yeah. and uh, he leaned on uh, Jefferson a lot and Madison. Madison was a uh, really a big. Uh, guy about uh, engineering and and uh, design, yeah, cool stuff. You, These you guys would have, so you, talented. You would have thought he would have said, you know what, Mount Vernon's a pretty good place for the Capitol. <laughs> I won't uh, have to. I won't have to travel so far. You know? <laughs> yeah, or out there in the middle of the Ohio Valley somewhere. You know, yeah. like right in the middle. You know, we should, why, why should it be on the coast? Well, I was thinking it should be a short horse ride to work. You know. Well, and the remarkable thing, too, about this is, uh, once again, people had to come from so far away. And it was 10 o'clock in the morning in September, which, you know, can be questionable weather mm. in, you know, That's at this true. time of year. And, and it was questionable weather. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So there you go. Not a, not a great day, but he still got up, made a speech, and dropped the big stone for the right. Washington uh, my, I mean, your, your, your Capitol building. Most of which all state buildings yeah. are... You know, uh, build after, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Never, uh, never having been to uh, our nation's capital, of course, and or Yellowstone Park or anywhere else in my life, other than, <laughs> other than California and Vietnam, uh, <laughs> is is does the White House and the Capitol look smaller than you thought they would? Oh gosh, no. Um, the fascinating thing about the the Capitol is is there's these two side boxes, right? Right. One, yeah. One's the house for the Senate, and one's the house for it. So when they first built this for the first hundred years, in, in under the dome was where they resided. Right. The house, yeah. and it's really cool because they take you on a tour, mm -hmm. and uh, the the gal sits has you stand on the other side of the room, and then she goes to the other side of the room, and she bends over, turns her back, bends over, and talks to the floor, and you can hear her talking to you. Really. So, yeah, so the guy. So the that designed, acoustics uh, are pretty good in there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so the so the guy that was the engineer was a Whig, yeah. and he set up the uh, the Democrats to sit there, so the Whigs on the other side of the room could hear like clear as a bell. <laughs> whatever they whatever conference. they said, uh. <laughs> whatever, whatever they were planning, it was. They didn't pick up on it for like forty years. Well, they they need to uh, they need to check into that. Put them back in there. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the ma most amazing things to see. And oh, by the way, the dome, of course, was taken after Michelangelo's design of the uh, dome in in uh, in Rome. So, yeah, there you go. Right. Uh, and in England, you know, mm -hmm. oh, and, and Napoleon's tomb in in in, uh, in mm -hmm. Paris. You know, these are all very similar type architecture. Yeah. All right, in eighteen ten. No one cares, but Chile declared its independence from Spain. It did, and miraculously, it was not a bloody uh, separation. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Spanish sort of gave up Chile for two reasons: it was long, narrow. Uh, it was a bit, uh, you know, it was overwhelming as far as, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the geography. And there wasn't any gold and silver there, any that way they could find. Lots of copper would, you know, been found in the last century. Yeah, but, but I don't know if you know this. I didn't know this. Uh, they they have a territory on Antarctica that they went and uh, managed to grab um, after leaving. Chile the, does or Spain does? Chile does. Oh, Chile okay. went staked their staked a claim on, and you know all all these years I understood you know that Antarctica was free, right? No, yeah, it wasn't no, run by anyone. There wasn't anything not, there no. worth worth going down there. Uh, not uh, not uh, apparently yeah. not not true. You know, Chile does have a territory on Antarctica. Well, all that's, right. Good for them. That's, 
And, you know, I mean, I could go over the population and stuff. Yeah, we don't like care. I, but, yeah, I know we care. That's, you know, I, I wondered that, you know, well, 17 and a half million people. five hundred. <laughs> He's going to do it anyway, folks. Yeah, $506 billion <laughs> GDP for everybody that wants to know. Your turn to go to the guys that get us goods and services. There you every. are. 1850, Congress passed the Fugitive Slave Act, which allowed slave owners to reclaim slaves who had escaped to other states. Yeah, this was the uh, Compromise of 1850 that President Polk uh, wanted to, to uh, put together, and uh, you know President Taylor after him wasn't happy with. This was after Polk annexed Texas and all the properties from Mexico after the Mexican War. Not a good situation. They couldn't decide what to do with the new states, were they slave states, non-slave states. So the compromise was they had to return any slaves that came to their states, and they couldn't have slaves. All so right. there you go. 1850, also the last time I think uh, we uh, weren't in debt. <laughs> the That's U.S. Right. government wasn't in debt. And the Dred Scott decision uh, in I was 1850. Say, yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah, it was the Dred Scott. This was what caused the Dred Scott decision, which was a terrible decision. Yeah. Really. All right, we've got to take care of uh, uh, the slaves who uh, slave every day in the fields and uh, on the ranches and the farms here every day and the slaving truck drivers and slaving cab drivers and anybody that brings you booze, food, or clothing. Or we'll, we'll be right back with them right after this. 23 minutes after the hour, it's Wednesday, September 18th, 2019, 44 degrees outside. Tommy Galop, your morning mayor in the house. Uh, Shane Tom and half man, half amazing in Vancouver, British Columbia, and uh, this is the KMMS Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. And uh, on this date in 1851, uh, the first edition of the New York Times was published, and of course they've been in the news the last couple of days. That's right, and Henry James Raymond and George Jones were the founders, original founders, both uh, Jewish families. Um Amazing thing about the, about the New York Times, uh, founded in 1851, of course, nine years before the Civil War, uh, the great lady became so famous because of the 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 belief that that they were a bulk word of, of honest leadership, and the reason the family had done this is because of Hearst. Hearst was coming along and he was building his newspaper empire in in the 1850s to 1870s, you know. And, Yellow journalism in, at, towards the end of the century became a big issue. Um, you know, it's the, it's today ranked 18th in the in the world by circulation, third in the United States, but not really that big a circulation. 571,000 daily uh, newspapers in a city of 8 million and 12 million when it, during business hours. Uh, digital though is 2.9 million, 1 million copies on Sunday, and after this last weekend's. Fiasco with uh, Judge Kavanaugh. Very sad situation. Very, very sad to find, uh, it, you know, instead of uh, a, a respected, loved, and, and globally known rag, is turned into a dustbin, basically, yeah. right? A one part, a one party dustbin. You know, it's it's a very sad reality. Yeah. At one time, uh, a Sunday edition of the New York Times was 1,800 pages and weighed 12 pounds. That's right. I've, 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 like, <laughs> I've gotten them. And, and yeah. li people literally go out and buy one, you know. And it, it, like you say, it's, it's like three inches thick. Yeah. And pe people go home and a couple lay in bed with their coffee and dogs. And yeah. they, they, you know, they spend all morning long going through the, you know, like there's 42 <laughs> sections in it. I know. Yeah. It's a, it's a big paper. It, it, I don't know if it's, it's that big anymore with only 500,000 subscribers out of 8 million people, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's pretty sad. It's yeah. pretty sad. Yeah. But they've done it to themselves and they wantonly done it. That's well, yeah, that's the problem that, that, you know, that's uh, the problem. yeah, that they've, uh, well, the news media in general has just taken up sides and here's, you know, that's what we're going to put out. And, you know, if it if it favors us, we'll make it. If it doesn't favor us, we'll make it favor us. Yeah, Meyer Berger on September 17th, 1951, 100 years later, Nick, you know, nicknamed it the Gray Lady. Mm. And, you know, it's it, it's been, you know, uh, since September 27th, 2011, you know, you know, the issue they've always had is the, its motto is newspaper of record. Yeah. Not, not since like not anymore. You know, yeah, not, not. 
Well, in 1905, uh, actress Greta Garbo was born in Stockholm, Sweden. I want to be alone. What a baby. Yeah. What a babe. Yep. She was a big-time uh, actress, uh, obviously, uh, silent and talkies. She uh, made, she it made the transition. The, made it into the talkies that a lot of people didn't because their voices were not as people had expected seeing them in talking movies. They kind of it's sort of like us on radio that uh, when we see you see us, we don't look like we sound. Exactly. People <laughs> said that to us when we had our gathering. Yeah, well, you right. don't look like oh, you yeah. don't look yeah you don't yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. look like us. I I I. <laughs> I had a lady once that I met said, you, you, you sound shorter on yeah. radio. <laughs> yeah. That ain't possible. <laughs> no, but the thing about Greta was uh, her legs, number one. But uh, yeah. she, her voice was, oh, yeah. it, it was as sexy as her body. Like yeah, that. yeah. Well, she had, yeah, she had that uh, that Swedish accent that uh, everybody liked at the time, and uh, very uh, uh, deep. It was a deep voice. That's right, and, yeah. and the camera loved her her face. You know, oh, yeah. high, mm-hmm. the high cheekbones. Oh my God! Yeah, she must have, yeah, she know, was model material at the time. Yeah, and, that's for sure. You know, yeah. A large forehead, long neck. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and that that there's just a certain face the camera loves, even with yep. guys. I mm-hmm. mean, if you look over the famous actors of Hollywood in the last hundred years, a lot of similarities between you know both for the men and women actors. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, like physical similarities. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, in 1927, the Columbia Phonograph Broadcasting System, later CBS, debuted with a network of 16 radio stations. Yeah, I, I always thought it was the Columbia Broadcasting System, but as you pointed out, it was started out as a phonograph, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the phonograph broadcasting <laughs> system. Yeah, they, yeah well, they played records, I guess, on, uh, I, on the radio. Yeah. I, I always you know, wondered how that and TV started because... You know, would you would you give away free radios to people? <laughs> I mean, how would you? I mean, would I would I go out and buy a radio not knowing I'm, I'm going to get anything on it or not? Well, and, and the amazing thing was our author Judson mm-hmm. was an artist manager who managed he managed the New York Philharmonic and Philadelphia orchestras. And he was the one who founded CBS, and he also co-founded the Handel Society of New York with uh, James Grayson in 1966. But it, it's so incredible because even at that time, you didn't need a lot of money to be able to go out and create something because yeah. of capital. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's true. Yeah. yeah. All right. We've got to uh, pay some bills here, or we've got to be paid for some bills here. Well, you got to be. <laughs> Somebody's got to be paid. Uh, <laughs> One of us have to be paid. Uh, <laughs> there yeah. you are. So here are a few words from the people who pay me to be here. <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back right after the news at the bottom of the hour. Stay tuned. 24 minutes before the top of the hour. It's Wednesday, September 18th, 2019. 45 degrees outside. Looking for a high in the 60s today. So uh, And rain the rest of the week uh, up till Sunday. So it's not going to be... Uh, well, it's not going to be dry, but the good news is forest fires, none happening. None happening this time around. So we're pretty excited about that. You can actually see the mountains and uh, whatever. The air is pretty clean. And right. uh, we're having uh, we're having a, a good high old time here at KMMS. Well, from our text line, poll question, have you read the Mueller report for yourself? So, uh <laughs> Maybe we need to do that as a poll question. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, well, I'm sure all of our listeners have. Uh, have I have. Well, I, 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 I know I you mean, have. Yeah. Uh, let's see. From last night at seven eleven p.m. Just to let you know that uh, people are still thinking about us at seven eleven p.m. <laughs> the, oh my goodness! Really? From, from last night. Uh, so Tom doesn't need to read the Mueller report because Trump suck up Shane claims he read it. Suck if you're up. if you're gonna do a show on politics, read the friggin' report. Well, I downloaded the report this morning, Shane, to my desktop. I downloaded the Mueller report. I got it sitting all, here. All four hundred pages. All yeah. four hundred forty-one pages, I believe it said right. uh, on okay. my Acrobat thing. So it is. It's four hundred forty-one. Four hundred forty-one pages. Uh, it would really help me out if you would just uh, send me the pages I need to read <laughs> that, will, that will make the uh, that will make your case. Um, you know, I I don't want to read about uh, you know what 
Manafort did or what Flynn did or whatever, but if there's uh, anything about Trump that uh, he obstructed justice, just send me those page numbers. Uh, that's all in book two. Okay, uh, yes, yeah, I got both, uh, I got volume one and two yeah. or whatever, well, part one yeah. or part two, yeah. whatever they're it, called, and yeah, I got it, Anything over 28 pages is a book, so anyway, yeah. skip book one, go to book two. Okay, so I got it right there, so um, yeah. yeah, or give me the table of contents uh, part that I should look at, and uh, I'll be happy <laughs> to... Uh, I'll be happy to... Oh, no, you got to read it all, it's good stuff. It's... Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's <laughs> It's a nail biter, baby. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I'm waiting for the movie. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and look, I got to warn you: do not go to the bathroom to read this because you'll get too excited. So I, do not oh, go there. Okay. <laughs> well, good, good advice. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> Well, in 1947, on this date, uh, the National Security Act, which unified the Army, Navy, and newly formed Air Force into a national military establishment, went into effect, and I guess the Marine Corps was just on their own. Well, no, they came along, but the fascinating thing about this was this was just after the completion of the Pentagon, which they built during World War II mm -hmm. under Truman, yeah. and uh, so they con con consolidated But there's some interesting things here. Uh, the, 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 it was approved on September 17th, 1947. Um, you're going to recognize this name from yesterday. Uh, uh, Admiral Forrestal, Forrestal was the mm -hmm. first Secretary of Defense. And the signing took place the second today, or on eight, September 18th, 1947. Mm -hmm. But, like, where? Well, my gosh, the bill was signed aboard Truman's VC 54C presidential, air, presidential aircraft. Code name Sacred Cow. The first aircraft used uh, for the role of Air Force One and the first federal document ever signed on Air Force One. So there's a bit of history for you. Like, wow. You know. We had, an air, that, we had that, an air Force One in 1947. Yeah, the first one. And <laughs> and this was the beginning of the you know the uh, the industrial military complex because of Truman consolidating everything mm -hmm. and the establishment of that favorite. Those two favorite intelligence agencies of yours, Tom, the Central Intelligence Agency was right. created because of this act, and the National Security Council, mm -hmm. which la later, you know, uh, set up the um, NSA, NSA, mm -hmm. the NSA, yeah, National Security Agency, yeah. All right. Well, in 1970, on this date, rock musician Jimi Hendrix uh, died of a drug overdose and joined the 27 Club. That's right. That's <laughs> And, and that has nothing to do with, you know, having a good time in the bathroom at 35,000 feet. That's cold. right. Yeah. It's yeah, the 27 Club. Uh, many uh, famous people, Janis Joplin and uh, many others died on uh, at tw at the age of 27. Uh, sad yeah, and, to and, think and, they would, the things they could have produced today. That's right. And for yeah. you and me, you know, this was uh, the the golden age of guitarists. You know, the oh, high right, yeah. The high mark of a guitarist was the way this guy could riff on a on a mm -hmm. guitar. Yeah. Unbelievable what he yeah. could do, really. Yep, yeah. yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah, played left-handed, uh, turned it upside down and reached down, it and away with. Laid down, spun yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. He, whatever. He was uh, very creative too. Uh, you know, took some uh, Bob Dylan songs and really made them into into rock classics. So. Oh, incredibly. Yeah. Well, someone had to. Ooh. Yeah, I guess so. I've often said I don't think I don't think um, Bob Dylan would have made it on American Idol or American no, Got Talent. No. I don't think he would have made it through the initial audition. I agree, hundred <laughs> percent. All right, we got to take a quick break. We'll be right back right after this. Stay tuned. Fifteen minutes before the top of the hour. It's Wednesday, September eighteenth, twenty nineteen. Forty five degrees outside. Shane and Tom and half man, half amazing on the line. Tommy, go up your morning mayor in the house. Welcome to the KMMS Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. Hey, how'd you like to win tickets to the Bobcat football game this Saturday? You can do that right here on KMMS. We're going to give away some tickets tomorrow. And uh, between the 7, uh, 7 o'clock hour, we'll be giving those away. But you can also enter a drawing on our app chat. Uh, get uh, the AM 1450 KMMS app. And all you have to do is text touchdown to us. And we've got a ton of entries on our app chat. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, that's all you got to do is go to AM. Uh, if you don't have the uh, KMMS app, you can get it just by searching AM 1450 KMMS app and download that to your smartphone. 
And the uh, app chat button is right next to the listen button on our uh, smartphones. And all you got to do is hit that uh, hit that uh, app chat button and type in touchdown. And you are entered for two tickets to uh, the game on Saturday against Norfolk State. And uh, we'll be happy to do that. And we're going to give away two over the air as well. So for those of you who don't have a smartphone, you will also have a chance to win tomorrow. All right. And Eagleman, how many downloads and shows? Downloads and shows. We are now at uh, 1,539 downloads of 232 shows. Wow. 1,539 we are downloads. Wow. Imagine. I that, can't imagine this. That is, uh, that's pretty darn uh, amazing if you ask me. <laughs> it, it is impressive. It is impressive. Uh, uh, PWC, folks, uh, Price Waterhouse Cooper. Why are you uh, getting ahead of yourself? Why? Because in 1975, news, newspaper heiress Patricia Hearst was oh. captured by the FBI in San Francisco, 19 months after being kidnapped by the Simonese Liberation Army. And we all remember that. She's uh, photographed in a bank robbery holding a semi-automatic weapon that should have been banned a long time ago. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's right. But not only that, but this was probably the first story that went viral, so to speak. Yeah. And and was in the news cycle 24-7 for like a year. Oh, like yeah. a year. It was crazy. I remember that. Yeah, that there moment. were uh, uh, every couple of days there'd be a sighting of Patricia Hearst somewhere, <laughs> some, some gas station yeah. or some uh, house in somewhere so in San Francisco or whatever. But yeah. Uh, yeah, she was a big deal. She was a newspaper heiress of the Hearst uh, Fortune, uh, Hearst That's Papers, right. newspapers, and whatever. So uh, it was a big deal to have her kidnapped and then for her to show up at a bank robbery armed, you know, with a <laughs> with a weapon. Yeah, that's so, right. So, uh, yeah. Exactly. Now you can go to 1997. Coopers and Librand <laughs> and Price Waterhouse agreed to merge to create the world's biggest accounting firm. <laughs> Exactly, and the reason this is interesting is because Price Waterhouse Coopers was uh, created in 1849, you know, 11 years before the Civil War, and Price Waterhouse, 1854, they merged in 1998, 158 countries, 721 locations, 251,000 people work for it. I mean, this, this company's global revenue is $41 billion. I like this, though. Seventeen billion was uh, generated by insurance practice. So insurance practice is looking at your company and saying this is right the way you're keeping your books. Ten billion from tax practices. Oh right, then they do your taxes for you separately and charge you again. Oh, and then three. Th th my favorite one though is thirteen point eight billion a year in advisory practices. That's right. So, they, 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 you know, so they look at your insurance and, and, and what kind of insurance and everything and how you run the cover. And then they charge you for your tax return. And, and of course, then they give charge you for advice. Now, the reason this is important is because of that great guy, you know, Joe Senior uh, Kennedy, who set up the SEC. And it then became a requirement to be a reporting company. The SEC you had to do quarterly uh, 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 financials as a public mm -hmm. company, not audited. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the year, once a year, audited. So right. mm -hmm. there you go. All, pu all public companies are audited. Why isn't your government? That's right. Yeah. Well, in 2009, tens of thousands of protesters rallied in defiance of Iran's Islamic leadership, clashing with uh, police and confronting state-run anti-Israel rallies. Yeah, and, and the fascinating thing about this, and, and I'm glad they came up today because of what's going on over there. I mean, mm -hmm. Iran, I, Iran is on its knees. They are. And, it, you know, if Saudi Arabia doesn't retaliate because of what they've done, you know, they can't expect the U.S. Uh, the, the Saudis have to do it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the population is 82 million folks. 56% of, of, of that population are now under 30 years of age. So they were, half the nation's population wasn't even around when uh, the mullahs took over. Uh, the GDP is 1.5 billion trillion. Uh, they used to uh, do export 2.5 million barrels of oil a day. They're down to 400,000. So, you know, this attack on, on uh, Saudi Arabia is just, uh, they're, they're in serious financial trouble. You mm -hmm. and I both know. 
yeah. the, the whole the whole place is near collapse. They, they're trying to figure out how to engage the U.S. in some kind of military activity to be looked at as the victim. Yeah. Uh, you know, Europe hasn't walked away from them, even though they've broken the the, the, the the nuclear deal. I mean, it's a mess. And mm. the only guy that was ahead of this, your president. He saw it coming. He knew who they are. Amazing. So it's going to be amazing to see. Because your Secretary of State's in Israel, I mean, in Saudi Arabia right now, and then heading to the Emirates to discuss what do we do now with Iran. Right. Whoa. All right, we got to take another break. We'll be right back. Five minutes for the top of the hour. It's Wednesday, September 18th, 2019, 45 degrees outside. Jay Matabin, half man, half amazing on the line. Tommy Gallup, your morning mayor. This is the KMMS Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane, and uh, the only birthday notable other than um, <laughs> other than Greta Garbo, uh, which was who was born on this date in 1905 and died in 1990, uh, 85 years old, obviously by advanced calculus. And uh, the only other person that uh, might be noteworthy today is uh, somebody you never heard of, Raymond Geiger, who was the American editor of the Farmer's Almanac uh, that we all know and love. And uh, that would be, uh, he died at the age of 83, born on this date in 1910, uh, died in 1994. And uh, so that uh, takes care of our day in history, Shane. That's <laughs> it. There you go. Got it done. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right well we we got to switch to israel because it's important important yeah we do um major elections over there uh you know it's a parliamentary form of government 120 seats 61 seats needed for majority in the Kin the knesset there that's their, their parliamentary mm -hmm. building you know and uh there's uh, eight or nine what was it? one two three four five six seven eight nine principal parties uh, General Gantz, uh, the blue and white, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, Lukid. Right now, uh, the general's got 32 seats and uh, Benjamin 31, so he's down seven seats. And uh, Gantz is down three. But the the joint list, which is uh, a small party. So I, I just want to go through these so people know. This is an alliance of uh, uh, dominated uh, uh, Arabs. I mean, this is the Arab vote. In Israel, they got three seats, and then Shas, which is an ultra-orthodox religion, they got uh, one seat. Um, uh, you, you, you're not going to hear this from anyone else. So I'm, that's what I'm telling you. Yisrael uh, Beltianu is a nationalist uh, Orthodox party. They've got uh, nine seats. UTJ is a Torah uh, Judaism, another alliance uh, of the Hasist Hadis. Anyway, Orthodox Jews, <laughs> they have eight seats. Uh, uh, Yemen, another right-wing Orthodox group, they have seven. And I know this is boring. Labor Gersher is uh, Israel's uh, labor party. So they have a labor party. And, of course, they have a left-wing socialist party with five seats. So now the bottom line is, does uh, General Gantz or Benjamin, you know, the Churchill of our time, uh, who gets to form a government because you need 61 seats and they both have 31 and 32. So they need about another 30 seats to, from these minority parties. Now, Benjamin, you know how you – this will be a sixth term as uh, prime minister because he's always been able to get the Orthodox Jews behind him. One principal reason why, he he's never forced them to be in the military. The Orthodox Jews in Israel – do not want to belong to the military. Now, give me that one. Figure, let's figure that one out. Yeah. Well, they're young, you know. Nobody wanted to go to Vietnam. <laughs> you know, come on. <laughs> Nobody wants to go to Iran. Nobody wants to go to Iraq. All right. Nobody wants to go to Yemen. Nobody sure wants to go to Syria. <laughs> well, gosh. Yeah, I mean, I come on. What's, what's, what's to like about the military unless they're going to give you – 10 years of free college or something. Okay, well, clearly this is an act of war because mm -hmm. from all the information they're gathering, the FBI and, and everyone in, in Saudi Arabia, uh, the, the Iran actually did this with cruise missiles and drones. So mm -hmm. this is an act of war. So this, this, I mean, America shouldn't be involved in this at all, right? I don't think so, yeah. So if, if someone's going to do something, it, it can't be Israel. Of course not. Yeah. So it's Saudi Arabia it's who's be fighting, Saudi Arabia, yeah. and they're they're fighting in Yemen, and that's mm -hmm. that's why this happened. Yeah. So you know, 
goodbye Krug Island if the if the Saudis do something. Because if they took out Krug Island, mm -hmm. Iran would go back a thousand years. I mean, yeah. they, they, literally, right? Yeah. I mean, they, mm -hmm. the country would collapse within sixty days. So, yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens. Well, Scary if, thing, though. Well, I think like everybody, they're going to go to the UN and try to uh, solve this diplomatically, but first, yeah, and right. then they'll uh, see what happens after that. So. Well, Iran is Persia, yeah, and you know, and the Arabs' worst enemy are Persians. So it, it, this is this is interesting. We got to see what happens. All right, all right, that does it for this hour. Uh, we'll be back after the news at the top of the hour. Brooke Foster weather and Montana State news. So stay tuned. A lot more of the morning soapbox to come. We'll be right back. Thank you, Dan. Welcome back, everyone. It's four minutes after the hour of 7 a.m. It's Wednesday, September 18th, 2019, 45 degrees outside. And um, what a beautiful day it's going to be today and then the rest of the week. It's going to be bad. Uh, increasing clouds. We're going to have a high of 72 today. And uh, wind will be a little, a little breezy, but not like it has been the last couple of days. Cloudy during the early evening tonight, then gradual clearing, uh, low around 44. And then on Thursday, rain likely, mainly between uh, noon and 3 p.m. Then showers likely and possible. A thunderstorm after 3 p.m., mostly sunny through mid-morning, then becoming cloudy with a high near 64. And chance of precip Thursday night is 60%. And uh, we're, we're looking for a tenth to a quarter of an inch. And there could be a higher amounts possible during thunderstorms. Thursday night, uh, rain and a low around 43. Chance of uh, precip on Thursday night is 80%. And then Friday, rain, high near 59. And chance of precip on Friday is 80%. And 70% Friday night, low around 42 on Friday night. So quite a week ahead of us, Shane. Indeed, indeed. Here we go, baby. It's all upon us. All yes, it upon is. Let's see. From our text line, uh, 478-8298, don't want to go to war, pay a doctor to have to, to say you have bone spurs. Then uh, focus on avoiding VD. Well, good. I, I, What rank did Clinton get, uh, Shane, in the military? Do you remember? Or Obama? Do you remember what rank they got in the military? I don't. Uh, I yeah, don't I, I don't remember what rank they got. Uh, I don't yeah. know. Uh, uh, Truman? Do you remember Truman's rank? I, no, I, no. I don't remember his rank. Um, Nixon, Nixon, Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I guess, I guess yeah. uh, you know, uh, maybe, yeah. maybe they had bone spurs, too. Yeah, well, Probably. even George W. Bush, you know, he, he was owing oh, the National Guard. I'm well, sure. yeah, I mean, that's what I say. He served, you know. Yeah, he served, yeah. Reagan was in the military. Yeah, of course he was. Mm -hmm. he, so, he, was he was the man, baby. Yeah, and so was uh, George uh, 41, shot youngest down, no less. Youngest pilot in the, in the <laughs> Air Force. Yeah. There you go, baby. Yeah, so um, I don't know. I guess... Uh, I guess uh, maybe uh, maybe Democrats are the big deal for not serving. Well, Kennedy did, you know, but and and honorably. I mean, seriously, he know. did. Yeah, PT one hundred and nine and all that, all that stuff. So yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, Shane, that idiot, incomparable, impeachable President Trump was the only one in Washington to see. The uh, this latest attack by Iran coming. How ironic! The genius Democrats didn't. The only true existential threat to U.S. safety is the stupidity of the Democrats. Well, I I'd argue if I could. <laughs> well, no, but where 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 is your CIA? I mean, like yeah, yeah where are they at? Billions, yeah, where, you know, once again. You know, billions spent on your intelligence services, and they had no idea this was coming. Oh, and by the way, you know, all the the air defense set up in Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. was pointed in the other direction. Th this sounds like that wall that the French built, you know, to stop World War II, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, you know, the, the attack came from the south yeah, into, right. into their country. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it's one of these things you go, oh— I guess we should have radar going south as well. I mean, that that's a possible way to attack the country. Well, it's it's one of these things where you look at it and you go, like, who's going to be responsible for this major uh, 
bad situation. Yeah. <laughs> you are defending a draft dodger by comparing him to Clinton, who was impeached. Yeah. Well, yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, well, six of one, a half a dozen of the other, right? You're impeached, yeah. you're a draft dodger. Okay. Well, who cares? You yeah. Know? There you go, yeah. Uh, a lot of people went to uh, Canada, too. So, um, yeah, you know? and stayed. And stayed, yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know if you want to go back 50 years ago or 60 years ago now, I guess it is. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, yeah, you gotta, I guess you need to do that. Huh? Well, I, I think it's sort of a, I would think a prerequisite that someone that's president of the United States should have served in your military. Cause you know, that is the first and most important thing for a president to do, protect the country, protect the people and lead the military as commander in chief. So a bit difficult if you've ever really been in the military. And and I'm I'm not defending Trump, but you know, he did spend his high school years at a military academy. So he understands the you know the the doctrine of the military and, mm. and, and how it's set up. Yeah. But uh, you know it, it's mm -hmm. just you know when you're dealing with a a thing as big as the military complex in the United States and the Pentagon, oh my God. It's well yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and I don't I don't hold any ill feelings or anim, uh, animus against uh, anyone who didn't serve in Vietnam. No. Right, during the no. Vietnam War, I mean, if you got out of it, more power to you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so oh, yeah. It was not a nice place to be. <laughs> Let me tell you firsthand. And mm -hmm. and you shouldn't have been there. Yeah. Like we know that, right? It's that's the whole thing, yeah. Yeah. From our text line, Truman was an artillery captain in World War 1. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. You have to look I'll that up. I'll have to go look up and read about Truman again. Yeah, yeah, find out, yeah. Yeah, memory comes back to me now, and I guess I did know that, but forgotten it. Oh, well, I'm old. Well, that's all right. We're both old, yeah. <laughs> I'm so old. When I was a kid, uh, rainbows were black and white. Whoa, so is my television. <laughs> yeah, same here. Well, let's see. Uh, local news. We might want to talk about something local since we're supposed to, according to a directive by Town Square Media, we're supposed to be the local station, not the national news. So uh, well, it is your responsibility. It's a responsibility that we take very seriously here at KMMS. That's right. Hunters were injured in the uh, gravely uh, grizzly attacks. Uh, gravely, I guess it is. Uh, whatever. Uh, anyway, falls the time of year when incidents like this pop up. Bears are looking for protein, and hunters are full of protein. So, yeah, it's, 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 don't wander into bear yeah. territory without bear spray and uh, you know whatever else you need. But uh, yeah, the uh, uh, two attacks uh, on the uh, Cottonwood Creek area west of Black Butte on the Ruby River uh, side of the range. Both incidents involved a single bear. But uh, state officials unsure whether the same bear was involved in both attacks or whether it was uh, two different bears. But uh, anyway, first attack happened around 7.30 a.m. Monday, and uh, two men were heading south uh, from Cottonwood Creek when they were charged by a bear. Both hunters were hurt but managed to uh, drive the bear away. They received medical treatment in Ennis. And the next attack was about 11 hours later, around 6.30 p.m. Two men were headed north toward Cottonwood Creek when a bear charged. Only one of the hunters was hurt. He was treated in Sheridan and later in Butte, and the incidents are still under investigation. So, But, uh, yeah, you got to be careful out there. The bears are up and around, and um, they're getting ready to hibernate, and uh, they're going to, you know, they want some food and uh, yeah, want to put on some weight, <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, it's yeah. a long sleep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. Uh, from our text line, 478-8298, there's an awful lot you guys don't know, but continue to comment on it anyway. Well, that's why we have you out there to help us out. So if you can correct us, more power to you. Exactly. We certainly do our best to put out information that we have researched. That's right. And uh, unlike the New York Times, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, unlike the New York Times, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sorry that I didn't research uh, Truman more closely. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. but uh, you know that, that was almost before my time. Not quite. That's right. almost. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do know he wore glasses. I don't know what he weighed, but yeah. what can I tell you? Yeah, and um, we know he had a dog, but we don't know what his name was. 
no. And he went and, walking and, with and, the, and, and the and press a daughter, every morning. And a daughter who couldn't play the piano. Well, That's right. Yeah. And threatened to punch the critic in the nose for <laughs> a, a bad review of her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The first president since yeah. uh, Andrew Jackson that wanted to assault someone. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it seems as our governor is whining and crying, uh, struggling against the new rules in the 2020 race. It's hard for governors to raise the resources and build the uh, sort of national name ID that is required to build a successful presidential campaign in the modern era. Uh, governors uh, being uh, executive experience, uh, governors bring executive experience, I should say, and a track record of getting things done, and there's not a lot of evidence that voters are looking for that. Well, if you're having a problem uh, being president as a governor, I've got several words for you. Jimmy Carter, for one. That's right. <laughs> Ronald Reagan, for another one. George Wallace. <laughs> George Wallace. Uh, <laughs> well, he wasn't elected president, but... <laughs> no, but I'm just saying... <laughs> but he was a governor, president. yeah. Yeah. But... Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry, uh, Governor Bullock, I can't buy that. With social media, uh, you, can, you can target uh, whoever you want and get your name out there quite, uh, quite easily. Uh, ben Shapiro has a little uh, blurb on that uh, that uh, plays every well, now and then on our show. And the thing is, if he's so popular in Montana, you'd think he'd be able to get the minimum number of people to his, you know, that's mm -hmm. required. And well, he yeah. can't even do that. He can't give a you know the minimum number of people to mm -hmm. to pony up ten bucks. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's see from our text line four seven eight eight two nine eight. Some gave their lives in Vietnam. Some cowards became our president. I guess we're talking about Obama. I I don't know. Yeah. Or Clinton. Yeah, or Clinton. Uh, if kneeling for our flag disrespects the military, then what does stealing money from our military to build a wall do? Well, uh, nobody stole the money from the military. It was appropriated, uh, and uh, the president has a perfect right to take it uh, under a national uh, security or national emergency. And if Congress had appropriated the money, <laughs> but they didn't want to give uh, President Trump another win, so... You know, and the, that's and, and that's the job of the Army Corps of Engineers. That that's yeah. their you know that's their let us try. That's and I was going to say they're already being paid, so we don't have to put it out for bid or anything like that. Yeah. So it's actually a money saving uh, deal, pretty exactly. much. So exactly. yeah. yeah, the new GOP. We don't care about the character, lying, draft dodging, cheating on all his wives, as long as he mocks the libs. Well, I uh, Bill Clinton then. <laughs> if you want to. Well, I, I don't. I don't think you have to blame him right now for mocking the libs. They're doing a pretty good job of it themselves. I was going to say, them. yeah, they're uh, they're <laughs> they're pretty much they're they're pretty entertaining. I would uh, I would yeah, tell exactly. you, yeah, I would I would say they're pretty entertaining right now. So, but uh, well, anyway, back to uh, back to more local stuff. Um, yes, please. We've yeah. got to we've got to do some of that at least. Yeah. Uh, the Crow, uh, Crow Tribe is concerned about high elevation uh, development in the Crazy Mountains. We talked about the Crazies not too long ago because of the the uh, uh, trails going through there. Some of the trails are on private property, and then, you know, they're going to have to reroute some of them uh, because people were getting a little upset and, uh, you know, going uh, going on, uh, on that. But uh, anyway, the members of the Crow Tribe are concerned about some private land development at a high elevation in the Crazy Mountains. Uh, a uh, place tribal members consider sacred and are asking federal officials to protect that property. And uh, Shane Doyle, a tribal member, said he received pictures of a cabin site being developed close to the shores of Twin Lakes at about 8,000 feet of elevation near the headwaters of, of the Big Timber Creek. So, or, I would I would I would call that a survival camp. Yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say this. Walmart's not exactly within walking yeah. distance, is it? That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, there we are. Well, also too, the um, uh, the uh, county, uh, the Gallatin County commissioners uh, allocated an additional sixty three thousand dollars to the uh, purchase of two conservation easements on Tuesday. Uh, bringing their total contribution to 377000 for the preservation of 2,100 acres 
in the eastern part of the county. And we'll have to ask the commissioners when they come in Friday about that. Uh, the two easements are on the, the Woolsey Ranch and will uh, prevent additional development, limiting land use to grazing, minor timber harvest, grassland restoration, and agricultural production. So uh, the the uh, Woolsey's uh, uh, took over the land in uh, 18, 15, 1885 and are one of the two founding families of uh, Sedan. So... Uh, both of these properties are spectacular. They are marvelous. And um, I think this is appropriate use of the county funds. So that was Don <laughs> Seifert uh, that uh, said that. So, All right, Don, here it comes. Don, so you can write that uh, down on the list there, Shane, that we've got. I just the, uh, did, buddy. I yeah, just did. Yeah, we've got the uh, commission uh, questions there. Uh, a Livingston man faces new peeping Tom charges. And I, I, I resent this, Shane. Uh, why is it not a peeping uh, Shane? <laughs> How come it's a peeping Tom? It's a peeping shame is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Livingston man <laughs> accused of deleting from his phone photos and videos of young girls inside Walmart is facing a new peeping Tom charge. I had no idea girl watching in Walmart was a, was, was a criminal offense. <laughs> I guess it makes uh, sense. You know, I, I, I love people watching. My favorite place, to, there are two places that were great for people watching, yeah. Fifth Avenue in New York City. Yeah. And, and and the entrance of any casino in Vegas, stand at the entrance into the casino. Oh, yeah. And, 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 and watch everybody walk in with their outfits and their gowns and you know, oh, yeah. dress up. They dress up to uh, go to the casino? Oh, oh yeah. Baby. I, oh, my God. I thought everybody was in shorts with I'm from a Nebraska t-shirt or a not John Vegas, Deere hat bitch. or something. <laughs> no more, huh? No, not in Vegas. I like, oh, yeah. I like airports. Airports are a great place to watch people. You know, everybody's dressed differently. <laughs> Some of them got the fancy suitcases. Others got a, a you know, a glad bag of stuff. Well, and and the, and the ones that are just sitting there in sheer panic, going, "Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Please get get me there! Get me there!" <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, you can see that's it on true. The page. Yeah, I've got to get to my gate. I got to get to my gate. Yeah. I, oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Going along and the got the uh, high heels and they're clicking along. Uh, you know, at a speed walking pace. That's right. Yeah. All right, we got to take a little break. We'll be right back with more right after this. Stay tuned. 23 minutes after the hour, it's Wednesday, September 18, 2019, 45 degrees outside chain from our text line, uh, airport, PJs and pillows. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, what, yeah. that's what I see. Uh, when Trump is out of office, we conservatives will be able to say we didn't support this liar and con man. Well, go ahead. If every president has to serve, it really narrows the field. Did Lincoln serve? I don't think so. Well, he was a, he was a commander so. in chief, I guess. So you could yeah. theoretically uh, say in war he uh, he did. So uh, it takes two years to declare an emergency. Two years? I don't think wow. so. I don't I think don't... so. I think a hurricane. I think Rita uh, pretty well and uh, and uh, Katrina exactly. created. I don't think we waited two years to declare an emergency no. there. So maybe it's not an emergency. Uh, just steal from military families when Mexico says, no, we won't pay. Republicans defend this. Sad. Well, uh, I put the blame on Congress. They had the opportunity to fund the wall and should have and didn't. So Well, the, the Mexico's funding uh, their military, you know, to be uh, at both borders, north and uh, south. That's... I was going to say, they're they're putting up a wall of people uh, they're, uh... they're paying for. So um, I, I guess maybe a wall doesn't have to necessarily be a physical wall. It could be a human wall as well. Yeah, so. Exactly. Well done, Eagle yeah. Man. Very good. Yeah. Uh, I'm just glad you and Shane are uh, commenting on the considerable amount you do know. Shane is a walking, breathing Swiss Army knife. So, <laughs> well, thank you. Someone, I appreciate the compliment. Good for you. Yeah, we, we get a lot of liberal commentary, so thank you for that. Yeah, there you go. Well, uh, you know, uh, all views are welcome here, so uh, that's that's what we do. So uh, let's see. Back to uh, back to our news. Uh, MSU is uh, part uh, partnering. They got a partnership with the city of Bozeman. And uh, paying dividends for Montana State University because they're uh, using composting uh, program. They're keeping tons of trash out of the local landfill and helping the university 
uh, reduce its overall environmental footprint, according to university administrators. So uh, some of the uh, trash from uh, Bozeman is going to MSU for composting, and uh, I would have guessed that's, I think the uh, city picks up grass, uh, you know, your grass clippings, if you want to throw those out with your, with your garbage, uh, they'll pick those up as well. And uh, so there we are. We're doing we our, we're don't, doing our don't, bit. We're don't doing you have our, a school? Don't you have a school of agriculture there? We do, yeah. And this mm-hmm. isn't something they enacted like fifty years ago. Well, like, you'd think so, <laughs> but uh, you know. <laughs> I mean, I no. I'm just saying, if you're getting an agricultural degree, the first yeah. I think agricultural 101 sometime during the the school year, you would be talking about composting. You think so? <laughs> wow. I think so. Okay. Uh, well, it's part of the university's new strategic plan called Choosing Promise, and uh, MSU will develop a, com- um, a comprehensive sustainability plan by 2020. Uh, oh, meeting wow. sustainability goals will require every member of the MSU community, students, faculty, staff, alumni, and our uh, community partners uh, working together. Uh, waste uh, diversion is uh, one component of our emerging uh, comprehensive sustainability plan and our progress demonstrates how partnerships can deliver real results. There you go, baby. Let's it's, get it done. It is just, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm so excited about this news that, uh, how about you? <laughs> I, it, it, you know, it, it, it's something that, you, you something smells rotten here. I'm telling you. So, something not good for you. You don't like, it smells rotten to me. Yeah. You think that's rotten, huh? All right. Well, I don't know. I guess we'll uh, I guess we'll have to see. So, well, uh, in other news, uh, guess what, Shane? Uh, over in uh, Livingston or over by Chico Hot Springs, they are building a movie town. We're oh, really? Building, yeah, it's a twenty-seven uh, building uh, thing. Some of them are facades, but uh, the bar has a working uh, restaurant and a working bar. And the brothel rooms upstairs are rentable uh, <laughs> by the hour, I guess, if you have a girlfriend and want to uh, spend a little time there or whatever. I don't know. But uh, anyway, yeah, they're uh, they're putting up this. Uh, they're going to uh, be uh, uh, taping or, uh, I guess, uh, the movie. Uh, oh, what's the movie? Uh Something Robert the Bruce, Robert the Bruce movie. Wow, uh, they're that's gonna make another good. one, I guess. They're gonna make another yeah. one, so yeah. they're figuring out. Uh, so, anyway, they got this uh, 27 building uh thing they're building over here, uh, just south of Chico Hot Springs on uh, property over there. So, uh, it's gonna be, uh, I guess, probably a tourist attraction between movies and uh, whatever. So, I guess we'll find well, out. So. I'll bet there's some state benefits in there for you know the movie industry to do uh, work in your state right like you know that's that's what well goes that's on yeah that. that's what they're uh, that's what they're hoping uh, yeah uh, the movies kind of left Arizona because they cut their taxes of tax break uh, and then they started going yeah. to New Mexico so they're hoping they'll come to Montana if we uh, uh, give them an incentive so but we got to get out of here, and uh, we got Montana State News, Fox News, Brooke Foster Weather, Mountain Hot Tubs, and other things for you to listen to. We'll be right back with more right after this. 24 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Wednesday, September 18, 2019, 46 degrees outside. Shane Matobin, half man, half amazing. Tom Eagle, your morning mayor. And this is the KMMS Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. And, hey, you can win football tickets for this Saturday's game against Norfolk State at MSU. And all you got to do is be here between the 7 and 8 uh, hour tomorrow on, um, no, wait a minute, is tomorrow, tomorrow's, yeah, tomorrow's Thursday, yeah, Thursday. Yeah, tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah, Thursday, yeah, we give tickets away on Thursday. And uh, if you want to get in the drawing, the app chat drawing, that'll give you another chance to win uh, the AM 1450 KMMS app. Uh, the uh, app chat is right next to the listen button on your smartphone. And all you have to do is text the word touchdown to us. And you got you to gotta have it in by 10 o'clock tonight. And uh, that's when we close the voting. And uh, tomorrow we'll give away two tickets on the air. And uh, our uh, complicated uh, uh, computer program will draw a name out of the uh, submissions on the uh, AM uh, 1450 app chat. 
and uh, we'll have uh, two winners tomorrow. So keep that in mind. There you go. Yeah, yeah, get some yeah. get some tickets. Why not? Why yeah, not? Right. I mean, come on. <laughs> Pretty easy. We're giving you every chance we can to win these yeah. things. But uh, the other thing you need to know about is free dentistry, free dental care from uh, the Hayes uh, Dental Group. Uh, they are going to uh, uh, they'll you have your choice of filling, extractions, or cleaning free. Uh, that'll be performed on those 18 years or older or accompanied by a parent or guardian. And uh, registration starts at 7.30 a.m. at Hayes Dental Group, and they're at 1226, 1226 Stone Ridge Drive, 1226 Stone Ridge Drive, over behind the Holiday Gas Station. And the number, if you want more information, 586-2117, 586-2117. And uh, patients are encouraged to arrive early, dress appropriate for, appropriately for the weather, and bring chairs, blankets, uh, water, snacks. Uh, it may be a while before you'll be able to be seen. So, uh, but if you're, uh, you know, if you can't get dental care elsewhere, uh, they'll uh, do fillings for you. They'll do extractions if you got a bad tooth that just has to come out, but you know you uh, aren't able to afford uh, the dentist uh, or uh, cleaning. Um, they will be doing all of those things, and that is this Friday. Uh, September 20th, and um, starts at 7.30 at the Hayes Dental Group at uh, 1226 Stone Ridge Drive, and it's free. Their hours are 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., so get there early and uh, get uh, registered and um, get um, get whatever you need done. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. The seventh year they've done this. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a seventh, their seventh annual event, Dentistry from the Heart. The day they give back to the community that's been so wonderful to them. So Yeah, there you are. That's fab- fabulous. That's pretty fabulous, I would say. Yeah, indeed. What do you think? Yeah. I think so, 100%. Anything I, local like that is huge. That is a good deal. You know, it really is. So, all right, uh, let's see. Uh, we can take another quick break here and uh, because uh, some other folks want to talk to you, so we'll be right back right after this. All right, welcome back, everyone. 43 uh, minutes after the hour, 16 minutes for the top of the hour, I guess. Uh, Shane Matobin, half man, half amazing on the line with me. And uh, in studio, we've got Thrive in here. We've got Becky Hodgson. Hodgkinson. <laughs> I'll get it in a minute. Hodgson. <laughs> How are you doing? Good I'm morning. Doing, I'm doing great this morning. Thanks well, for having me in, Tom. Well, we're happy to have you uh, in here. Uh, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about you. You are you a native or are you a transplant like the rest of us? Or I transplanted here uh, thirty some years ago. All right, so you're. So I've I've been here a little while. I I don't want to give exact numbers because that really dates me. I know. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about Thrive for the people who uh, may not be aware of what Thrive is, what they do, and uh, all of that. Love to. So Thrive is an organization that just in a nutshell supports uh, children and families um, in the Bozeman, Gallatin Valley um, mm-hmm. through a number of different programs that we have uh, both in the schools and out of the schools. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been operating for about 30 years now wow. um, and have partnered with some really amazing um, organizations in uh, Bozeman and the Mm -hmm. Valley. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. Yeah. So what's going on with Thrive? What what do you got coming up that we need to know about? Uh, Yeah. So the the start of the school year for Thrive is always a really busy one. Um, One of our uh, several programs is uh, the CAP Mentoring Program. And I think many people – in the area know about cat mentoring and have been Mm -hmm. um, either impacted or know somebody who's been impacted by the program. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. We have uh, every year about 600 lovely volunteers who come into Bozeman schools and mentor a student one-on-one ages uh, kindergarten through um, high school. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, they do this uh, one hour a week, um, usually commit for the entire year, but sometimes, actually mm-hmm. oftentimes, we get people who um, match with their student for multiple years. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have some that go from kindergarten all the way through high school graduation. Wow. It's a really, so really wonderful. A, yeah. 
quite a time to spend with one it's, one cat. Yes, yes, it develops uh, a pretty amazing uh-huh. relationship. So, so yeah. is it is it? Um, do you help them with homework? Do you take them to ball games? Uh, do you take them to movies? Uh, spend play video games with them? What do you do? <laughs> Great question. <laughs> um, so we are only um, in the school, mm-hmm. so okay. um, so we don't um, leave school grounds. Um, and we have them come in, uh, it really depends on the student, but mm-hmm. it could be everything from helping with some academics to um, working on a project with a student in an mm-hmm. area that they're really interested in. Maybe you're creating something, mm-hmm. um, maybe you're researching mm-hmm. dinosaurs or um, anything okay. like that. Sometimes, mm-hmm. yeah. sometimes it's hanging out and talking and playing Legos mm-hmm. or games. Yeah, and just mm-hmm. being a really uh, mm-hmm. consistent, lovely support for a student. Yeah, just give yeah. them a, give them a break from the rigors of schoolwork and uh, kind of relax a little bit during the day, and to where you're not feeling like you're in a prison all day long. I guess <laughs> exactly. That's how I always felt. Exactly. I, I always felt school was a lot like prison, you know. And <laughs> for some kids, school is a love is a really exciting place, and for it some is. kids, it's a little bit of a harder place. Yeah. Um, and so having somebody who comes in every week. Mm -hmm. Um, and sees you, makes you feel um, pretty special. I have quite a few kids right now who are Mm -hmm. um, coming up to me and saying, hey, when's my mentor coming back? Yeah. Um, So we have about 300 kids right now Mm -hmm. that we're looking to match, Mm -hmm. um, and we'd love to have uh, people who are interested in in doing that, taking a lunch hour once a week to come down and um, Mm -hmm. hang out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess this will be between what eight thirty and three o'clock or three yep. thirty something mm-hmm. like that. Yep. So between eight thirty and three thirty, and uh, yeah, exactly. if you can, if you got an hour free a week, would it always be on the same day, or would it be? Um, I, I guess that would be. You'd almost have to schedule it. Uh, yeah, you know. yeah. We usually keep it pr- uh, very consistent, mm-hmm. um, but we do have some flexibility. If if uh, mm-hmm. you know, I have, for example, uh, retirees who. Um, come in and you know they might take a couple weeks and go on a trip that's fine Mm -hmm. um you know or students who maybe have a test one week uh, at msu and they can't be there um Mm -hmm. but we do like to keep it fairly consistent for the kids because they really do count on it okay yeah 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 Yeah. how's this how does the uh school feel about outside groups coming in and I, I guess they're in favor of it or you wouldn't have been doing it for this length of time but yes. I'm just curious as to uh, uh, do you get resistance from some teachers or uh, you know does the mentor uh, tell them something that uh, maybe the teacher doesn't agree with <laughs> um, it <laughs> two, actually, two is five or something a, like that that, do, that <laughs> we I don't think we run into that very often yeah. we do have mm-hmm. um Bozeman School's partners with us mm-hmm. to put to right. have this program, sure. and um, teachers are really, really in favor of it. Mm-hmm. Um, they are frequently the ones who nominate the students to have a mentor, mm-hmm. um, and so um, they're, mm-hmm. you know, they're they're looking at this as as a real uh, benefit. Yeah, um, we uh, have, and and the parents also are on board before the student gets a mentor. And the comments that I get from parents at the end of the year are overwhelmingly supportive, mm-hmm. and they see the really incredible effect that this has on their mm-hmm. on their child. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if somebody wants to volunteer, or what do they do? Oh, we uh, we have a really easy application process. You just go to allthrive.org. That's one word. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can fill out an application, um, and then we will have you come in for an interview uh, we do a background check on everybody and mm-hmm. then we uh, do a little work to match you with a student that we feel um, you'd be a good fit with yeah, yeah. Um, and we also mm-hmm. try to you know match you in a with an age level student that would be a good fit mm-hmm. you know some people are real comfortable working with kindergartners other people really want to work with um, mm-hmm. teenagers mm-hmm. Um, yeah. we also are having a um, block party tomorrow Thursday um, from four to seven, you're welcome to come down. Bring your children if you have children. Um, if not, just come on your own. Um, and we will have games and music. And where, where will the block party be? So the block party will be um, on uh, South Rouse between Babcock and 
Olive Street, right next to the Thrive Building. We're going to block Fantastic. that little block off, and there will be a lot of fun things to do. And we'll also have a cat mentor booth, and we'd love to have you come down and ask any questions you might have about being a cat mentor. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for coming in, um, uh, Becky Hodgson from uh, Thrive, and yeah. uh, we appreciate talking to you. And uh, we'll, uh, we hope we can uh, send you some volunteers at allthrive.org. You can check it out and uh, attend the block party there at the Thrive uh, uh, on uh, South Rouse, and uh, hopefully we'll get some folks over there to you. All right. Thanks so much, Tom. All right, thank you. It. All right, we'll be right back with more right after these important words. Stay tuned. Four minutes for the top of the hour. It is Wednesday, September 18th, 2019, 47 degrees outside. And uh, Shaman Tom and Half Man, Half Amazing on the line. Tom Eagle, mm-hmm. up your morning mayor. This is the KMMS Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. And uh, from our text line, Shane, every American and patriot should read the Mueller report for themselves. Do not rely on someone else to tell you. And as I said earlier, please, please, please send me the pages I need to read. I've downloaded the Mueller report. It's on my desktop. Um, You could save me a lot of time just by sending me the pages where Trump is guilty. So, you know, that's easy (laughs) to do. Easy to do. Just go through. Uh, Obviously, you've read the report, so you know where the parts are. So, uh, by all means, uh, send them to me because uh, I really... I really want to know. Uh, MSU composting, are the students really going to the dump and picking out compost? <laughs> I don't think I don't think they're going to the dump. I think the city is doing something with that. I, I don't know. Maybe uh, Jeff Krause can help us out with that when he comes back in a week or so. Because uh, some composting materials are bad for the dump. Uh, okay, well, <laughs> I, I, I would say almost all the materials in the dump are bad for the dump. Yeah, that's why it's called a dump. Yeah, that's why that's why it's called a dump. Yeah, we're right. <laughs> uh, let's see. You agree Trump took two years to declare emergency, so it's not. Well, let's review the two years. Uh, manufactured crisis at the border. Manufactured crisis. That's all we heard for the first year. And then all of a sudden, 400,000 people started going across the border every month. Right, Jane? And caravan, right. caravans started coming north and... Um, that we uh, there's no way to handle all of those people until Mexico got smart and stopped them at the border under threat well, of tariffs. Yeah, and you know, it, you, you know, it was a made up uh, 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 deal with the the president by the Democrats. And then when four hundred thousand people started coming across your border, it was a yeah. catastrophe, and the de- Democrats mm-hmm. were going, "Oh my God, you got to do something about this!" Right? We got children in cages. What are you doing? Oh. What are you doing? Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh. And since Congress wouldn't act, uh, the president uh, said, uh, "And see if this sounds sounds familiar. I've got a." pen and a phone. I've got That's a pen right. and a phone. If Congress won't act, I've got a pen and a phone. I think that was said by the previous president, I believe, That's right? Correct. So yes, uh, Trump uh, took uh, matters into his own hands and said, okay, it's not a manufactured crisis. 400,000 people a month coming across our border is a is a national emergency. It, it's an invasion. It's an invasion, yeah. It is. So there you are. Uh, get the report for yourself. No more text till <laughs> until you read the entire thing for yourself. Uh-huh. Oh, well, why are we why are we even talking about the Mueller report? I mean, that thing was debunked. Uh, Mueller testified before Congress. Uh, Congress had the chance to read it. Certainly, no one did. No one went to. No one went to read it. So, uh, well, you know, I, I, you know, that's because Chubby Chicken Nadler and in, in you know Mother Hen Pelosi and mm-hmm. you know and all were crazy. Chicks are, you know, yeah. they just can't let it go. It, it's like it's really weird now. I think Americans are looking at this, going, "Yeah, what, what's wrong with these people?" I mean, well, I just say no, they've, they've it, yeah, they've given up on the Mueller report. Now they're going yeah. after uh, Lewandowski and uh, you know some of these other folks, and uh, and uh, you know nobody's even mentioning the Mueller report anymore. I mean, well, and and, and yesterday, on page ninety-two. Got to go read 92, volume two, because that's, you know, that's what they talked about with Lewandowski yesterday. Well, at about least somebody's book. given me a, uh, a page number, so <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go read that. <laughs> All right, we got to take a break. She's got to call back in. We'll be, we'll be back right after this.
Welcome back. Our final segment, uh, six minutes after the hour of 8 o'clock in the morning. It's Wednesday, September 18th, 2019, 47 degrees outside. Shane Tobin, half man, half amazing. And Tommy Gallup, your morning mayor in the house. And, uh, well, uh, Lewandowski uh, gave the Senate all they, or the House all they wanted yesterday, Shane. Well, you know, it, 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 look, he's been before those committees, like, for hours before. Mm. They have all that on the record. There, there's not a question he hasn't already been asked. What a waste of time. He, he, Mueller, 20 hours with Mueller. And, you know, this is, it's an embarrassment. It, it's really, really an embarrassment, Tom, seriously. Yeah. The, 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 mm. the Democrats look really silly, just silly. Well, it, it, I'd have to, I'd have to agree because, you know, they were, I mean, what have they counted on, Shane? They counted on uh, the uh, electoral, uh, the electoral college not voting him in. Uh, that was the first thing they. That, yeah, that he they can never make happen. it. Yeah. yeah, that was the first thing uh, that uh, even if he was elected, uh, we they tried to encourage the electors not to vote for him, to vote for somebody else, or vote for Hillary, or change their vote. Right. And then uh, that didn't work. So uh, then we had to go with. Um, you know, we had to go with he's incompetent, he's uh, uh, senile, uh, he's uh, stupid, uh, ignorant, or whatever. And, uh, of course, that didn't work. And then he started uh, doing, uh, getting stuff done that other presidents hadn't gotten done, like the t- uh, reducing the corporate income tax, for one, and, uh, you know, tax cuts. And you can, if you want to call them tax cuts for the rich, be my guest. But they, well, <laughs> all you have to cool. do is look at the tax brackets to know that's BS. Right. Let, let's just go over this real quick. Yeah. Corporate tax. Uh, the corporate tax dropped to. Mm-hmm. It uh, dropped to what? Uh, it's uh, what? Twenty one. Right. From thirty five. Yeah, from thirty five. Okay. Yeah. Now there's 160 million people working in your country. Now this is staggering, folks. You got to hear this. 125 million are private sector jobs. Self-employed are eight nine million people of the 160 million. And uh, um, what's the other one that? Uh, oh, and uh, four, what is it? Four, 23 million are government jobs. So uh, you look at this, there's 15 million union jobs. So basically, the private sector and self employed represent 135 million of 160 million people working. They're the ones that get the benefit of that tax reduction. Mm-hmm. You're, if you're self employed or you run a private sector company with less, you know, th- you know, that's 500 people or less. Mm-hmm. Now you can grow, expand, and do more for the economy. And these numbers are serious. I mean, we're mm-hmm. talking about th- those are the people running your country, running your economy. And, wow. And it, also, and it also makes you more competitive overseas, which we weren't before. Yeah. And yeah. now we can afford to sell our stuff. Um, that's right. Th- prices of uh, domestically made goods would come down because we don't have as, as much corporate tax to pay. Uh, employees can make more. I mean, the list is endless from from that and, one and, thing. And of the 160 million jobs, there's 13 million that are manufacturing jobs, in, mm-hmm. and most yep. of which he's brought back. So it, th- this is serious. These numbers are serious. You got to look at them to realize what he's accomplished. Yeah. It's serious. I, and then I, it's not that I'm patting him on his back. Yeah. It's just numbers don't lie. People do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I want to make one other comment real quick. Yesterday. Your senators uh, in the Senate, well, they spoke for eight hours, 12 Democratic senators about gun control. And, you know, it, not one of them brought up the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, which we talked about endlessly mm-hmm. and provides seven different categories why people can't get guns. And yeah. everything they talked about yesterday is already law and covered. Yeah. It's just a waste of time. Unbelievable. All right, let's take a phone call. 522-TALK is the number. Caller, thanks for waiting. You're on the Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shane. What's up? Good morning, gentlemen. This is Jerry. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good, Jerry. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning, sir. Um, I uh, think that a lot of these uh, folks that are texting in about the Mueller report, they they seem to be robo-texters. I mean, it's the same thing every day. I wonder if they just push a button where they are and the, the same text comes out. I'm I'm very um I'm very concerned about that. They have no originality among them. Another thing is is people should look up who Nadler is and look at his oh, yeah. background. You mm-hmm. will see a very very corrupt leftist individual. Oh yeah, forty yeah. forty years. He's he's running for 
You know, 40 years that he's been in, in Congress. This would be his 20th election. And some of the things he's done, Shane, did you know he was involved heavily in releasing uh, members of terrorist groups out of jail? I, I know. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. Big on sanctuary cities and, and the whole slew. I mean, it, it, yeah. It's, well, what he did it's was is he, he, he petitioned Clinton um, back in 99 to release members of the FALN. Now, I don't know if you know who those people are. They're a radical mm -hmm. Puerto Rican terrorist group. Yeah, and they're they, the ones that, that put the first bomb in the, in the U.S. Yeah. Congress, right? In yeah. the House. Absolutely. And he bombed released, the U.S. House. Yeah, and he, he petitioned uh, Clinton. He wanted these people released, you know, back into society. And they're nothing but terrorists. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, the way he treats people, you know, um, when he's questioning them, he's nothing but a terrorist himself. So I well, don't. Well, it was incredible watching it yesterday because they made the big deal about not we can't insult you know each other because we're members of the house and we have to be respectful, but they're not even respectable of the witness. They insulted that guy constantly. Right, and mm -hmm. that 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 lady from Hawaii, she does the same thing. She doesn't. Yeah. She oh, doesn't. Yeah. And she just insults people, mm -hmm. people, and that's all they're doing, and it's a it's a real shame. As far as I'm concerned, I would I would hope that the president sometime in the near future would pardon every single one of these people who were investigated um, and brought up on charges in the Mueller uh, investigation because they, he totally overstepped his bounds. And the staff around him was nothing but a bunch of uh, well, he's waiting for he, he, You know, he's waiting for the Durham report in Connecticut because he's, in, you know, a federal attorney. And he's waiting for the uh, investor... Uh, general's report on these FISA warrants. When, when that blows everything off the walls, you know, you're, what you're suggesting is only rational. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think that the the investigation is going to bring any of these folks up on charges, though? I, I do. Know. Tom doesn't. I do. I don't. I don't think so. Um, I agree, Tom. I, I yeah. think these people are just going to walk scot free, and nothing's yep. going to happen to them. They may get a slap on the wrist or some sort of censure. Mm -hmm. I don't think anything is going to happen as far as them getting any kind of jail time or indicted. No, I don't think any. so either. No. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Thanks, All buddy. right, thanks for the call. All right, we'll see. I, I, I'm, I'm just going by history, Shane. That just doesn't happen. I the three the you know, <laughs> I'm telling you, Comey, Brennan, and and Clapper. You know, the three Stooges. Yeah. They're they're all going to have jail time. They're all going to jail, buddy. They're yeah. all gone. Well, and, and and I'm still saying Rosenstein <laughs> has turned. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, you know, I, I I I when this comes out, and I believe it will, you know, that's going to mm -hmm. be the the death knell of all these guys because he, he'll he'll get immunity because he signed one of those FISA warrants, so he'll get immunity and he'll turn yeah. on all. Of them. All yep. right. Uh, I'd like to know what President Trump has accomplished that a President Rubio or Cruz could not have done. Well, I don't remember Rubio and Cruz running on tax cuts or opportunity zones or um, I think they all ran on better health care or getting rid of Obamacare. But um, I, well, I, I, it, and there's it, no way to answer that question because they're not in office. So who cares? Yeah. And, you know, you know, Warren had this this. Uh, uh, Thing in in the park, you know, in Central Park, and, and they said, oh, 20,000 people. Well, first of all, it's a city of 8 million. Mm -hmm. And where she was in the park, they have concerts with 200, 300,000 people show up. Yeah. So here she is in the in, in an inner city, totally, you know, Democrat with a Democrat mayor and 20,000 people show up. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't be out there, you know, bragging about that one. Boy, yeah. that's, okay. that's not good to me, if you ask me. I'm surprised. Trump managed to shut the uh, government down for a record time and accomplished nothing, uh, then uh, declared emergency and stole from military families because he lied that Mexico is paying. Well, I don't know. If that's all you got, you don't have much. Um, well, yeah, especially yeah, since I mean, he gave the military a pay yeah. raise. Where are you? Where is this person? Yeah. Go read something. <laughs> Would you go read something, yeah. please? <laughs> Not a robo texture, just don't want to, to be abused by callers. So I guess uh, if you call in and say that, uh, the callers will will uh, abuse you. So um, no, but yeah. that's fine. If that's what you think, uh, that's, uh, right. you know, that one of the reasons that we read these things is, well, uh, partly is to show the, the uh, ignorance of people who just 
follow the talking points of Mexico will pay for the wall, tax cuts for the rich, um, you know, the Mueller report, uh, yada, 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 goes on and on and on. And they're not going to accept anything else. They're not going to accept that Trump was duly elected. And, uh, you know, maybe he'll be elected again. Maybe he won't. But looking at the group of uh, 10 that have been put up there, and there may be more if, um, you know, if they uh, get the number of polls or whatever that the DNC will accept, uh, we may have more join the join the pack, but I doubt it. Well, and, and the and the other reason it's important to read them is twofold. Number one, they're listening, Tom. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and and number two, clearly not <laughs> listening to what we're telling them is the law. Yeah. And it, so you know, you it's like mm-hmm. talk about intolerance. So here we go. Yeah. You know, if if you're a bigot, you're intolerant of another person's point of view. That's true. The the bigotry across the board. I mean, mm-hmm. it's 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 overwhelming. It's incredible. From our text line, 478-298, this day in history, Trump haters calling into the radio. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Well, they're texting into the radio, but same thing, I think. It it is, yeah. All right. We got to take another break. Uh, We'll be right back right after these important words. 20 minutes after the hour of 8 a.m., it's Wednesday, September 18, 2019, 49 degrees outside, Jane. The temperature's going up a degree or two here. As we yeah. as we march toward the 60s or low 70s today, um, also uh, don't forget uh, you can win football tickets uh, this uh, Saturday. Norfolk State is going to take on MSU at the Field House or the Field House. I don't know why I keep saying the Field House. It's going to yeah. be at the stadium. Yeah, they're not going to be at the Field House, so don't go there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> but they are going to be at the stadium. You can win uh, tickets tomorrow between the 7 and 8 o'clock hour on the uh, phone here. We'll be giving away uh, one set of uh, two two tickets for that uh, uh, game. And also, you can get a second chance to win uh, using our app chat line uh, on your smartphone, AM 1450 KMMS. And uh, the app chat button is right next to the listen button. All you have to do is text the uh, the word touchdown to us. Touchdown is the word of the day. You got till 10 o'clock tonight to uh, uh, send us touchdown by your uh, smartphone. So um, that will get you in the drawing for uh, two tickets. And uh, so we'll give away two sets of tickets tomorrow, one by phone and one on our app chat. So let's take a phone call. 522-TALK is the number. Caller, you are on the air. What's going on? Well, I'm just happy to be here, Thomas. I'm happy you're here, Pete. <laughs> yeah. You know, I find it amazing that we do, we just had an attempted coup on our duly elected president. And what do we hear from the Democrats? Give up your guns. No tyranny here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and as far as the Mueller report goes, Mueller investigated nothing, zero. He didn't do anything but collect a paycheck yeah. as witnessed by his testimony. Yeah. He didn't know nothing. So if you want to believe what's in his report, which he didn't write, go ahead and believe it. But, uh, you know, yeah. you just— Well, the, uh, yeah, and the incredible thing to your comment— is all the Democratic, you know, like the attorney from the Clinton Foundation. I mean, all of these were Democratic lawyers, you know. And so they wrote the report. And that Weis- Weistein or whatever his name is, I mean, his history is so scary. But anyway, the point I wanted to make was they're the ones who wrote the report, couldn't find anything. Right. So they made it up. They're, they're not yeah. lawyers. They're liars. Or is it liars? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's liars. Yeah. yeah they, they, they lied to get evidence that didn't exist, and they lied about the evidence that they got that didn't exist. Mm-hmm. I mean, give me a breath. You know, that's how that's their, their whole MOS is, is lying and leaking. So, Pete, is anyone going to go to prison? Tom and I disagree. What's your opinion? Well, there, there's what I think about it. I think that, that Barr and the guy from Connecticut there and Girl. Trump – understand that if nobody goes to cri- prison if this is just a, if these guys are allowed just to walk off into walk off into the sunset it's going to happen again yeah and, you know you can't you, if you let this ride if you let it go let these guys go 
it will happen again, and it will be out of the same agencies, you know, mm -hmm. these the stay-behind boys, and uh, it'll be worse the second time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, give me a break. I mean, what, what do you, you know, we're we're supposed to? We're going to turn turn our guns into the the people who just tried to oust your president. Yeah, right. That's pretty jokey, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and time, come on. Give me a break. They have. They people need to do some time, and I and I got the same group as uh, as uh, Shane, except I might add maybe a couple on uh, in Brennan's crew. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, if you, if you you know I listen to these guys all the whole deal, all of them, you know, with, especially with Clapper scratching his head, not wittingly, yeah, not <laughs> not wittingly, and you're an intelligence agency. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whoa, how scary! Yeah. <laughs> it is scary. Like well, I say, lock them all up. Yeah, they're they're, they're guilty. Yeah. We know it. Lock them up. They can still do the CNN show from Folsom. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, sure. the evil oh. man. You just <laughs> roared through this guy. I love it. <laughs> we'll just have to search the camera and make sure they haven't weaponized it somehow. <laughs> right there you go. <laughs> And, and and give them give them a script because they're incapable. Well, I just hope when they go to prison, you you know how famous those those uh, video cameras are on uh, nesting birds and stuff, and how they go viral. Yeah, I, I I think they should have cameras in prison on these guys live. Yeah, you know, so you can see like then the, then it would be public humiliation as well as being in prison. You want to you know so you you, you know you could actually. Check them out. What they're doing. You want to see what Ma you want to see what Manafort's doing right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think you should be able to. Yeah. They, okay. You know, so you know, if they're going to commit suicide, <laughs> you know, like please. You know. Well, I'd send them down to Cuba. Yeah. 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 You do that. <laughs> Gu Guantanamo. Yeah. Well, that, that's a, that's what you. That's where traitors go. Yeah. Well, we, we need the equivalent of Siberia here. They need to go to northern Canada or Alaska or somewhere where it's friggin' cold and. The, you know, there's no there's no glass in the cell door or windows. You know? Well, you know, according to them, uh, Trump is his best buddies with Putin, so I'm sure he'd be okay with that. Well, yeah, we we could. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we could buy a little piece of Siberia and send everybody Rent, there. You're suggesting he rents a gulag. Yeah, that's it. Um, ah, the Putin would give it to you for free. Right. <laughs> he, he, he wouldn't charge him any rent. Yeah, of course I'm over here. Yeah, it's, as long as you pay up. for the room and board, it's yours. <laughs> there you go. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> yep, you bet. Have a good one. All right, take care. Caller, you're on the Morning Soapbox with Tom and Shay. What's up? Hi, guys. Hey, I have a question. Sure. That I've always wanted to get answered. All right. So they tried to get Trump on collusion with Russia to fix the election, right? Yep. Right. I'm trying to wrap my mind around what is collusion. I mean, what would that look like? I, I don't understand how Trump, even if he did collude with Russia, that they could fix the election in the United States. I don't get it. Yeah. It, there's nothing to get. It's, there's no law. There's no law for collusion. It yeah. doesn't exist. It's just yeah. a word. Shane and I collude every morning. Yeah. yeah we, <laughs> so, I mean, even if Trump sat down with Putin and said, look, Vladdy, uh, how about throwing the election for me? Putin says, no problem, man. I'll take care of it for you. Yeah. I mean, that, that's not illegal. <laughs> you know, you it's not illegal. I said, <laughs> why don't you run a bunch of ads on Google for me? Yeah. And that would be okay, too, right? Sure. Yeah, why not? All right. So now they're trying to impeach Trump. Yeah. But for what? For what? Yeah, I was going to say, for what? Obstruction, obstruction of justice. And uh, I know, but how, you, that, again, uh, you're, that, that's pretzel logic. If there's no injustice, how do you obstruct it? Well, yeah. hey, that's right. There's no crime committed, <laughs> committed so what was he obstructing? Yeah. <laughs> well, right. now, come I mean, on now. Mueller said if there was a crime, we would have <laughs> charged him with it. Uh, come on. You know. Yeah, I know. Anyway, I, I... well, uh, the thing that I can't understand is every one of these social media platforms is run by an off the charts liberal. Yeah. How how in the world are they getting positive mm. Trump stuff going down? It seemed like if anybody's going to fix anything, it would have been to fix it for Hillary. But yeah, yeah. Well, well they tried. Then, uh, okay. they, they did. They uh, the yeah. entire intelligence agency tried. Give me mm -hmm. a break. Yeah. yeah. And then so, the other thing is. I had a guy, 
I met him at pizza in 2000. I distinctly remember that he told me that in 2015 there would be no snow in Big Sky. <laughs> that from 2000 to 2015 there would be no snow in Big Sky. All right. Now, All right. I, I think Ocasio Cortez is going to look that stupid. 10 years from now, mm-hmm. when the world hasn't ended or Florida isn't underwater. Yeah, yeah I would. I, I got to agree. Yeah. Right. That, hey, great. thanks for the call. I got to go. All right. All right thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening. All right. We got to uh, get out of here for a couple minutes. We got Fox News, Montana State News, Brooke Foster Weather. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, oh, we got uh, the Mint and Zip Recruiter. And, of course, uh, more of Tom and Shane. There you go, buddy. Let's I go. Mean, that's that's a lineup you don't want to miss. <laughs> Not All right. We'll be right back right after these important words, so stay tuned. 24 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Wednesday, September 18, 2019. 50 degrees outside. Wow, 50 degrees, Shane. What can I tell you, man? It's pretty amazing. It, it's it? an Indian summer, baby. Yeah, yeah, we're getting there. Uh, bring us up speed on the markets, young man. Well, here we go. The Dow's down 39. The Standard Poor's down five, and the Dow's at you know holding in at 27,000. Still, Nasdaq is down 19 at 7,800. These markets are really strong, and I uh, just want to mention the commodities market because you know gold is peaking again. It's up 550 over 1,500 dollars. Silver's almost back to 18. Now, remember my comment about worst case scenario. You know, everyone talks about gold. If you're going to buy, buy silver coins. That's the biggest leverage, but that's not advice. I'm just saying if the contrast is, that's where you'd want to be because silver coins are usable. Uh, government bonds, look at them. The people are buying your debt. The U.S. Uh, 10 years, 1.76, and the 30 is back at 2.24. Don't think that the Fed will reduce the interest rate because no inflation for folks. Currency markets are uh, the biggest markets in the world, and the euro's trying to hold a dollar ten. Uh, the, the currency markets are, you know, jamming it to the Chinese uh, yuan and 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 raising it. And you know, everyone's saying that China manipulates its market. Not since it joined the IMF and the uh, world tr- and the, and the uh, you know the it floating its currency on the currency market. So it's it's the traders that are deciding the price of the Chinese yuan, not not the Chinese government, unless they step in to support it which sometimes they do. Mm-hmm. But the most important thing is, I just want to comment, because I brought up this, this thing about the black swan several weeks ago, Now, and I said it was a sell-off. And I want to be clear on what I meant by that. It, I, I expected a global sell-off of U.S. securities, which, which we've seen. And what's been remarkable is the resilience of Americans to buy up their own market. Huge. That tells you what the tax cut has done. It's given Americans the opportunity to invest again. But, you know... When I called the black swan, didn't anticipate, you know, Saudi Arabia's oil fields being attacked. So, I mean, you know, black swan is, you know, events that we can't expect and that would have a huge impact on the market. So your market's totally resilient, but we still have to worry because things are still in the flex. There's your market wrap up. All right. Thanks, Shane. Uh, Let's see. uh, What do we got here? Um, when you, you got say, a phone caller. Yeah. Uh, I guess we do. Yeah. 522 talk is the number. 522-8255. Caller, you're on the morning soapbox. What's up? Good morning, gentlemen. Hey. And I use that term loosely. <laughs> Thank you. That, that's a compliment. <laughs> we've uh, we've been called worse by better. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, your, one of your previous callers talked about how you know, the Mueller didn't investigate anything, and he's absolutely right. If that Mueller report would have had any credibility whatsoever, they would have looked at, you know, the Christopher Steele, the dose, the fake dossier, and James mm-hmm. Comey and his FBI agents going to the FISA courts with their fake warrants, and, you know, on infinitum ad nauseum, there was so much um, criminality on the Hillary campaign, and this and that that went on. He didn't even bother to look at any of that. I know and, that's scary. Yeah. So I mean, and everybody. I mean, everybody knew there was a lot of things that were going on that had absolutely nothing to do with Trump. You know, spying on him and you know one thing or another. And the Mueller report never addressed any of the opposite viewpoints that 
You know, it's all about find something on Trump, anything, whatever, anybody that ever had a cup of coffee. Well, with well the whole thing was about the Russians interfering with your election, and he didn't do any investigating about the Obama administration's failure to do anything about it or report about it. Exactly. No, nothing. No, none of that was covered, in, and that was specifically what he was supposed to look at, and that's what I find so Yeah, he incredible. went completely out of bounds with what – you know, he was supposed to be looking at. He went off. He was off the leash. You know, they squandered. I think the figure I heard is somewhere around thirty-five million dollars. Yep. You know, with lawyers and invest. I think he had thirty different people working on his team. You know, and of course they bankrupt the Honorable General Flynn and everything else that went on. It was, it was hideous. And so these liberals that call in say, "Ah, just look at the Mueller report." Well, yeah doesn't yeah. prove anything, and they didn't investigate what they should have been investigating in the first place. So exactly. that's about all i got to say, fellas. Good call. Thank you. All right. Hey, thanks for the call. All right. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back right after this. Hang on. 15 minutes for the top of the hour. It's Wednesday, September 18, 2019. Uh, Shame and Tom and on the line with me, Tom Eagle, your morning mayor. And, uh, well, uh, text line is... Uh, <laughs> Is lining up here. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to find. We have so many here that uh, we need to uh, make sure everybody gets in. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tom, if you bother to read the Mueller report, it explains how Russia used social media. Well, I know how they use social media. I'm just wondering why all the liberals allowed it and uh, who, who were so hot for Hillary. Uh, callers haven't read the Mueller report. He explained the scope of the report. It was limited. Shane didn't read it, else he'd know Mueller looked at Obama's reaction to uh, Russia. Uh, let's see. Uh, we already let Hillary go free. <laughs> what the hell do we expect to happen? Uh, shame on uh, Tom and Shane for colluding to promote uh, truth, justice, and the American way. Would you seriously consider Gerald Nadler's background as a U.S. representative from New York's 10th District? You will find a trail of corruption that goes back a long time. It's a joke that he's the chair of the House Judiciary Committee. He's a typical subversive Democrat and uh, anti-American politician. Uh, uh, Do you suppose King George wanted to prosecute the Patriots at Lexington and Concord for obstruction of justice? (laughs) That's a... That's a pretty good one. <laughs> That's a good line. That, that, that should go viral. That, that yeah, one should go viral. Yeah. Uh, so where's Chris Griffin and his, his big mouth about this Kavanaugh-Trump impeachment crap? There's no defense for this disgusting uh, for these disgusting liberals. Uh, it's called conspiracy. That is a crime. We should buy Greenland to be our Siberia. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Comparing what Trump has done to what Cruz or Rubio could have done is just ignorant. The intellectual vacancy of some texters is stunning. Uh, Warren held her rally at Washington Park, uh, Washington Square Park, and not Central Park, Washington Square. Uh, Washington Square Park is smaller than Bogart, and uh, to put 20,000 people into Washington Square Park is quite a feat. Well, Maybe, but uh, look, look, well, what about Hong Kong? Well, they why, got two million people in the streets of Hong Kong. Yeah, there you go. That may be right. Let's take a phone call. Five two two talk is the number. Caller, thanks for calling. You're on the air. What's going on? Hey guys, it's Kevin. Kevin. Hey, you know that last call I was talking about how um, you know, couldn't understand. You know, Mueller went out way out of the range of the of the scope of the inquiry, going into all these other people and stuff. That was the point. I mean, they they made up the collusion about Russia. So, of course, there was nothing about Russia because mm-hmm. they made it up. I mean, the, the, the whole point of it was make up something that we can then go in and say, well, this is the reason why we have to do it. And it's because we of this story about Russia and prostitutes and, and money lending and all mm-hmm. that, which was all made up. So then they could go in and start looking into all the dirty laundry, whatever they could find from people who were working with Trump, Trump, his family. I mean, that was what, that's what the abuse is so, um, I don't know if disgusting is the word, but like, um, ter- it should be terrifying that, you know, we are used the FBI and, and, and NSA are being used by political 
to go after somebody mm-hmm. um, to look in them because if it can go if they can go after Trump, they can go after you and me. They can go after you know. Let's say you start a Tea Party group. Oh, they want to look into that. Let's say you join the NRA. Oh, they might want to look into you. Or let's say you say I'm going to run for Congress in Montana. Well, they might come start looking at you and through the NSA and the FBI. I mean, that is dangerous. That is East Germany and and every other you know horrible regime um, coming to, coming to life in our republic. So. I mean, that's well, and, and, and the amazing thing is right now, the biggest problem people have in your country is medic, medical expenses and, and, and the care for their family. The, the, the scary thing about this is you better have 200 grand in the bank account because if they come after you for lawyers, you're going to need it or you're going to have to sign off on something to get out of it. And that's what, you know, you, that, that's what's so terrible about this, you know. Right. Well, Pro- I mean, that's what a process with- crime. If, 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 you know, you're bankrupt now, and if you don't do this, we're going to go after your kids. So right. sign well, that's what they did that, with you know. That's what they did with General Flynn. I mean, you know, yeah. he they they basically bankrupted him and probably threatened his son, which I guess apparently he worked with, and he probably said, "Okay, okay, whatever, stop doing it. I'll give you what you want." Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, that's the scary thing, and the, the whole Russia thing was made up. I mean, they made that up so they could have the excuse to now look into Trump and all the people. Uh, so I mean, it, it was just one terrible thing, and. Whether it, it ever actually comes out in the, the general people in America who don't pay attention to politics or, or you know, are sycophants to the left ever really see it, I don't know if that's even ever going to happen. I hope it is. I hope it does. I hope it's the light is shined on it, but uh, I guess time will tell. Yeah. All right, you guys. Hey, All thanks. Right. For thanks hey, thanks for the call. Yep. Yeah, yeah, appreciate one? it. All right. Well, I just, I just mm-hmm. want to mention Go for that, it. you know, the, uh, under, uh, the, you know, things you need to know today. Uh, you know, the Trump administration is talking about changing EPA rules, in particular with California, about cars. And so what I did is I looked up, because we talked about this yesterday, and I said yesterday that, you know, every state has its own environmental quality or environmental department. Guess how many states have an environmental department <laughs> aside from the federal environmental agency? 51, which includes the District of Columbia. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, it's so funny. I love it. It's, it's like, yeah. like, like everybody isn't concerned about the environment. Well, every state is. Like, come on. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm looking. Uh, I just did a search for uh, Facebook and Zuckerberg, and uh, the page that came up is almost entirely redacted. So maybe I, <laughs> maybe I can't uh, <laughs> maybe I can't check that out uh, right right at the moment. I'll I'll continue while we uh, have the rush update and uh, some other words of wisdom here. So hang on, we'll be right back. Here's the rush. All right, three minutes for the top of the hour. We've got a caller patiently waiting. Shane has determined that this call is worthy of airtime. So, <laughs> call, <laughs> caller, you on the air? Okay. Well, I, I already vented everything to Shane. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> but, but uh, so then nobody would know what I said. Um, ba- basically, it's isn't anybody tired of the whole witch hunt thing? We to, are to the point where. Where where are the people that will st- stand up and say, Nadler, sit down and just do your congressional job and get get your head um, in a different place? <laughs> yeah, I, w- I would agree. We're all tired of it. It's great radio for us. Uh, unfortunately, we got to talk about it. But uh, Well, why is he yeah. skewering Lewandowski? I mean, I know they're trying to get to Trump, and they yeah. try every way they can, but mm-hmm. Nadler is just um, – He's, yeah. he's he's slipped a gear somewhere. Well, I think uh, you know he wants to, uh, he he thinks he's got all this power to bring people in there, and they're going to confess under his uh, under his uh, mighty hand, and um, you know people just aren't going to aren't going to go for it. Well, he's not a he's not a judge. Well, he isn't. No, he thinks he is. Why, why do they think they can do? It? <laughs> I, I mean, the whole thing is just weird. I, I, I told Shane it's like it's out of the out of the twilight zone. Yeah. Yeah, I expect. Can we get back to reality now? Yeah, I expect uh, Rod Serling to come out of the woodwork and say, "Hey, Gerald, (laughs) you're you're in a different zone than we are." Yeah. Uh, If Nadler thought (laughs) Sterling was alive, you know, he'd call him to Congress to testify. Well, probably would. (laughs) 
Oh, gosh. Oh. Well, <laughs> well I, uh, I agree with your point that, uh, yeah, it, this is getting really, really old. It's been going on for, what, ever since Trump was uh, sworn in. Or throwing fuzz on it or something. Well, it I is, mean, it's yeah. so old. It's yeah, just it's stinky a, and smelly, and it's like, well, throw it out now. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, this is, this is not what... <laughs> This is not what we bought at the store. So, well, that's not what we're paying our Congress for. That's not what we're paying. You know, well, we, sure. we, yeah. there's issues in the world and in the nation, mm-hmm. and and these guys are are yeah. um, he's off the wall. Yeah. Well, when was the last time you heard about children in cages? Oh my God, what happened to those poor people? What's going on there? Yeah, I haven't heard anything about it in two weeks. Well, you probably will every time a- AOC or whatever her name is opens yeah. her mouth. There's, well, a, maybe. there's something that's, about it. Yeah. She just has, she's been quiet lately. That's for sure. She has. Maybe uh, maybe Nancy sat on her for a while and said, hey, knock it off. Well, maybe <laughs> since the drone bot. Uh, the, yeah. did, what, um, did, was I right on the news that there's mo- there were more than drones? There were also um, rockets? Well, yeah. they were shot from the drones. Yeah, they were shot from the drones, apparently. Oh. So, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I got to go. I'm sorry. But okay. hey, thanks for the call. And thanks for we'll venting. Try again. And, uh, we'll try again next time. Have all, a good day. All right. You too. Thank thanks you. a lot. <laughs> all right. Say goodbye, Shane. <laughs> goodbye, Mayor. I look forward to talking to you in the AM. Be happy. Be safe. God bless. All right. Thanks, Shane, for being here. We appreciate it very much. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Hey, don't forget, uh, tickets to the Bobcat game. Uh, get on your app chat, AM 1450 KMMS. Text us, touchdown, and to get in the drawing, we'll give away tickets on the air tomorrow, 6 a.m.